This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Sun Power. This is the 7 a.m. Barbados Today update from Monday, February 24th, 2014. I'm Dawn Paris. Thousands of jobs in the agriculture and manufacturing sectors are on the line. Head of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, is warning that many people will lose their jobs if government proceeds with removing duties and taxes on inputs for the hotel sector. He tells Barbados today the measure will prevent businesses from making enough money to continue operating. And he's doubtful that promised safeguards will work. All this will do is to put the jobs of thousands of people within both the agriculture and manufacturing sector at risk. We have investments that people are prepared to make in the agricultural sector and the manufacturing sector. This, this investment will be put at risk. We cannot be at this time talking about trying to encourage people to go into agriculture. And then where are they going to sell their products to? If they cannot sell them in the hotels, where are they going to sell them to? And sometimes some of the same products which are being imported by for these hotels ends up on the local market and we have to compete with that. This is not a situation that is tenable. The Democratic Labour Party is making no apologies for how it has administered the country during the first year of its second term in office. In fact, Finance Minister Chris Sinclair is insisting that the party has done nothing to be ashamed of. Sinclair told a joint meeting of the St. Michael North and his St. Michael Northwest constituencies last night that the government was able to hold the economy together and maintain adequate levels of foreign reserves up to May last Last year. And he says the Frundle Stewart administration, which has clearly shown its political mettle, was forced to do what was necessary to bring the island's finances under control, including making the hard decision to send home public sector workers. Meantime, Sinclair, who's been under pressure to resign over his handling of the country's economy, is standing by his work. He says he will step down as asked to do so by the Prime Minister. So if I have to be Bob's the one feel that I go somewhere and curl. I ain't going away and cry. I am in this to help my country. That is what I am I didn't run anywhere to be Minister of Finance. I didn't go and to David Thompson on his deathbed and beg him to be Minister of Finance. He called me. I didn't call him. Mr. Stewart has expressed his confidence in me and I thank him for it. And while the DLP was holding its meeting, the opposition Barbados Labour Party was rallying its troops for street protests. Member of Parliament Santia Bradshaw told the BLP's rally at Quakers Road, Carrington Village, St. Michael, that it's time for peaceful demonstrations, and she's hopeful the party will give the go-ahead. Meantime, another speaker, David Gill, is demanding that Tourism Minister Richard Seeley be fired for incompetence. He said Seeley should be held responsible for declining tourist arrivals over the past years. In sports, changes are being made to the National Senior Games. Minister of Social Care Steve Blackett says the locations for events leading up to the April 26th to 27th Games are being altered to bring out more patrons. The changes follow a dramatic decline in spectators at last year's game by more than a thousand over the previous year. Now, these changes have been made to locate the activities leading up to the finals directly into the bubbles of the communities and that is principally to reignite the waning interest in the games and to encourage new athletes to get involved in our active aging program. By so doing, hopefully, uh, community participation and interest will be aroused and the spectators will follow their favorite athletes into the national stadium, hopefully bringing that newfound euphoria, which we are hoping uh, will be cultivated um, uh, There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold.
sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Kesha Sun Power. In the region, Jamaican police have launched a probe into Saturday's jailbreak at the Santa Cruz lockup in St. Elizabeth. Assistant Commissioner Derek Knight says the Inspectorate of the Constabulary will determine if there was any deviation from force policy. And he's warning that disciplinary action will be taken if any member of the police force is found culpable. Four men escaped lockup by cutting away the grill at an opening. Two of them have been charged with murder, while the others have been charged with robbery and housebreaking. Internationally now, Ukraine is expected to have a unity government by tomorrow. The deadline was given by the newly appointed interim president, who took over on Saturday following the dismissal of Viktor Yanukovych. The interim leader has also suggested that Ukraine will reopen trade talks with the European Union, which its predecessor had rejected and that had triggered protests. And that's where we end the 7 a.m. update. Join us again at noon. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper. And like us on Facebook to get more news and sports. I'm Don Paris. Have a great day. This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Catch the sun power.